Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Molex Synthes. Uh, we're about to get started on Aspirin. I wanted to remark on something that I sort of mentioned in passing though, which is that like, this feels like kind of a weird game. I get that it's in early access, and it it has aspects that like make it feel Zack-like, but it just feels a, like a big departure from the recent progression, where like for a while things were really kind of... Uh, like at first, the early Zectronics games were pretty dense and hard to get into. And it feels like he's, and, and, and like, very, very light on theme, right? Uh, it feels like recently he's been making games more accessible with a clearer manual, fancier, prettier pictures, and so on. And this is like kind of a surprise revisiting of the TIS 100 era, era where like, you're just kind of thrown into a menu and you you solve puzzles. I, I'm not against it. It's just kind of weird and surprising. Uh, okay, so what's this all? It's, it's, this now has a... Ooh. Okay. So they've added this... Um, this is my, my, my second recording session. The, the first three videos were all uh, yesterday for me. So they've added this. In addition to like being able to move stuff around, you can rotate them around. Not totally sure why you would want to. And I still don't totally get <laughs> how these actions correspond to. Oh no, I see. So, like, suppose I was operating on some molecule that was being held here, right in the center. If I decided that actually I want to place it here instead, then. This action makes all of the whatever these guys are called, I forgot. Actuators, we'll say for now, makes them shift their focus one point to the right, no matter where they were. These guys don't have to shift because they're already on the horizontal. So I bet if I put it here, it still wouldn't shift, right? Yeah. But if I, like, um, rotate it, now when I press left, it should go up here, yeah? Yeah, okay. So I, I get what that, what that's all about now. Okay, interesting. Anyway, we need to make aspirin. And I remember we looked at this before the last episode and I discussed some plans, but I don't remember them at all. So obviously this is like benzene, right? Um, and we don't need any sulfur, so no sulfuric acid. Um, This, right, and this is very much like acetic acid down here. Right, we just need to like, um, add a hydrogen here. No way. We're gonna have this we'll need to remove a hydrogen here. Then this carbon will be kind of ambivalent, amb ambivalent about which of these two it bonds to, so it won't uh, change. It'll stay pointing here. But then I think once we, once we put this oxygen next to a deficient carbon from the benzene, I think these bond changes will ripple through, right? I think so. I guess we can test that hypothesis without having to build out the whole thing. Um, benzene. So my thinking, uh, as I mentioned, was something like to have four remove that hydrogen. And now nothing will happen, right? Yeah. The bonds have stayed the same. This oxygen is just deficient now. The carbon sees no reason to switch its two bonds to make the other oxygen deficient. Uh, but if we pair that with making this carbon deficient as well, then this oxygen should want to move there? No. Because the carbon wants a bond. <laughs> 
I guess the point is this oxygen is just sort of happy already. Do I have to like, um... There's no way to get this just mirrored or something. Oops. Because if it were mirrored, I wouldn't even have to do this nonsense, right? Uh, I can spin it. I can't mirror it. Um, and I think placing it like this and, and, and doing this is not really solving the problem, right? So... Right, so I need to like move this up here. Maybe, maybe the answer is to shunt this instead of uh, removing it. This makes, what the heck has happened here? I was thinking anyway, pull this up into the other oxygen basically, right? Uh, after doing that. So then um, also shunt like so. Yeah, and now the double bond has moved here and the excess hy hydrogen is up here. Um, so when I remove this, this will be the deficient one and it'll want to bond with, um, with a deficient carbon. So one, I guess, I mean, we might as well, hang on. Yeah, one, one is not doing anything important. These two are handling the acetic acid. Um, so I think three at this point should be pushing after all this shunting has happened. And honestly, you could probably sh push it this time, right? No, because he has to wait for one to wait. Oh, yeah, then we have to remove the, uh, the excess hydrogen that we put in here uh, once the bond has cemented the other way. Uh, so let's, I guess, have two do that. On I guess this same turn should be fine. No, because it has to wait for that. There we go. Now it's all bonded together. And uh, yeah, and then we just need um, to attach this OCO thing here. Um, I forget what what precursors I have that look like that. Nothing great, right? Again, methanol and ethylene glycol are the obvious ways to go. I don't know exactly which one is better. Like, they both require removing a lot of excess hydrogen and nuking a couple of uh, useless molecules. Or, yeah, I guess they're molecules. Um. I'm starting at this point to bump up against the like, you only have six of these, these dudes limitation. Um, so I may have to figure out a more organized way of combining this stuff. But I mean, I guess in principle, the work that needs to be done on all this is simple enough that one guy standing over here could probably do it and push it into place maybe get some help from this one right because like okay first thing this one needs to remove this excess hydrogen that's that's wound up here at, at this point right um but it needs to do that after this bond has happened so that these two just don't know just bond increase their bond strength with each other i think that's what would happen if i did this right 
that might have been what happened. <laughs> uh, these two might have bonded together instead of these two bonding and this carbon uh, remaining deficient. We might have had the oxygen remain deficient. So I think just for like clarity, I'll put this here where it can really only resolve itself in one way. Right? What happened when I did this? Yeah, same result. But this is the way that's kind of guaranteed according according to my understanding, my mental model of the game's time structure. The other approach is not a guaranteed behavior. Uh, okay, so that's all lovely. But now we need this methanol on the scene, so to speak. And... What I'm thinking is we put it like here? No. I want the extra oxygen because this guy's going to be here, so this carbon's here. So the excess oxygen needs to be here when I'm done with it, right? So one and two can kind of work on peeling getting the getting these ion, I guess it's not ionized exactly I don't totally understand what ionized means <laughs> but like I don't know get, getting the right number of hydrogens on all this stuff um, and we have an emitter number six over here to kind of push things in the right direction um, so once one is done with all its work then six can kick in uh, I mean, I guess actually six can do a bit of productive work first, right? Uh, we can start by just wiping out the carbon we don't need. Actually, that's a bit tricky, isn't it? Because, um, Then you can't push this thing. Cause like, I, I was thinking do this and then push it twice, right? To get it over here where it wants to be. Uh, but if you push it, a new methanol will appear in its place. So, you kind of want the spawning spots to be over here, yeah? But then it's really hard to destroy this guy. So, I don't know. Maybe we just don't try to rush things. Push it over. And then let... Uh, push it over at the right time. Only when we're actually ready for it. And then let... Um, what happens if I do this, by the way? Yeah, one seems to be able to reach, gra touch this before the uh, the excess, this, this new methanol gets in the way. So, okay, we can do that. And double check, I want to push it one step further. So, do that. And in the meantime, well, once it gets there, I can leave these guys in place. One can start operating on the carbon while two spins it into the right position. Like, um, that would be a rotate left, I think. And one's gonna remove, no, add, and prepare to delete. No, because this is the one we're actually gonna use. So we need to remove several carbons from it, right? Oh, that's interesting. That means that um, this guy can maybe do something productive by, like, what if he removes some carbons before we ship them over, right? What's even going to happen? It's going to stay bonded, but just be deficient. So that's actually quite useful. We can just remove all the carbons before we mail it over. Yeah? Um, as we do that, oops, I want it to rotate, which is Q, I guess. 
2 shifts it into place, and now it's not touching this other molecule anymore, which means we can very comfortably uh, perform more operations on this. Like, um, what exactly is it that we need to do? We need to, to destroy the carbon and push the oxygen into place. So one, at this point, should move from its perspective right. Uh, six, at this stage here, wants to add some... Is that right? Yeah, now they're kind of in the right place. We want to add some at the same time that one is removing some. Six can delete the excess carbon. One can push the remainder forward. And then I think we're set, yeah? Um, someone like uh, two can submit at this stage. What happened? Something weird went on there. Two is rotating while one is removing. Oh, is this carbon going to bond with this oxygen before it can get rotated out of the way? No. So everything still makes sense here. Now one should push, six should delete. That looks fine. Oh, I just panicked because like this thing evaporated when I wasn't expecting it, even though that was the plan all along. Okay, so this actually is like exactly what we wanted, right? I'm not sure how elegant this is. Uh, yeah, notice there's, there's a lot more people who've played since, like, yesterday, right? Um, it's not, it's not bad. It's definitely not good. Um, but, you know, whatever. A, a large number of symbols, I wonder why. I don't know. As I said, I'm not really working on optimizing all this stuff, uh, now or possibly ever. And we made aspirin, so that's cool. We're making... Dapsone? Dapsony? I feel like I'm kind of okay at pronouncing molecular names, but I don't know what to do with this one. It doesn't follow any of the patterns that I recognize. Uh, so this is obviously two benzenes, right? And we have most of a sulfuric acid in the middle. And then on the outsides, some ammonia that's been bonded back in a bit, right? Seems straightforward enough, doesn't it? This is kind of a good... Um, oh, by the way, what the hell is DAPS? It's an antibiotic. Okay. C12, H12, N2O2S. Yeah, definitely not one of those ones that I have memorized, like H2S04. Wait, did I even get that right? <laughs> Oh, it's right there on the screen. Yeah, H2SO4. All right. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, that's sulfuric acid, isn't it? Uh, it's, that's somewhere around here. Yeah, it's right there. Um, anyway, this, this seems like a good opportunity to use um, rotation. In, in at least two steps here. First of all, like, of course you could do this with two benzene uh, emitters, or not cyclohexane, get out of here. You, you could have two benzene 
precursors. But first of all, like this is taking up a lot of space already on the board, right? Wouldn't it be kind of cool if you could just put down one of them and have it um, emit twice? And so the way to, I don't know, I guess you could just push it four times. But I was thinking, like, what if you did a couple of rotations to, like, accomplish a shift in a different way? Maybe this is just not actually any better, but I want to see what this looks like. So let's say we did like this, right? Now it's over here. And an emitter here. Um, four. Could... Ah! Could, uh do something like this. Well, that didn't accomplish what I hoped it would. I think you need to maybe be lower to do kind of have that effect. That still didn't really do much. Am I crazy? Shouldn't rotation be able to do this? Okay, it could, right? We got them pretty far away by just doing some rotations, right? Um, but ultimately, this required more effort and just as much time as just like pushing it a few times would have, right? So maybe this whole idea about rotating was not so clever after all. And I should just do something like... Ah, can't do that, gotta do pulls. Uh, because otherwise the other thing gets in the way, right? Right, so... Also, did something weird happen with bonding in the middle here? No, this, this hydrogen just shifted visually a bit and then and went back okay so anyway this is a way we can do something right it costs us fewer modules this way uh on the other hand this five is not doing anything uh right so I, i'm like ha i have one fewer benzene but one more actuator so i really didn't accomplish much at all maybe i should just have two benzenes how does that end up looking like you can do something kind of nice i think uh by just like shove the sulfuric acid right in there maybe it'll be tough to uh ah yes if you do that it's going to be tough to get these hydrogen access to these hydrogens in the middle but uh, these carbons in the middle but actually it's not because we're removing these two outer oxygens anyway and that gives us a way to shoot beams in at these carbons. So, right, I'm thinking something like this, where, each of these, I guess, starts by like, removing, a, oh, not you, removing a hydrogen so that they're now deficient and they want to rebond. Uh, and then they, they walk over to work on the other oxygen and this carbon, right? So uh, four is gonna go right. Actually, they're both gonna go right? Seems weird, but I guess it's true because they're both moving counterclockwise. Um, add so probably probably you need two oxygens to get things to two hydrogens to get things to fix themselves right this readjusts the bonds to be the way we wanted but the oxygen is still involved so we can't just delete it now we can delete it and now if we remove another hydrogen from each of these they'll be willing to bond with the sulfur Yeah, so this is all great. We just have to get the ammonia in place, um, or the nitrogen, I guess. It comes from ammonia, but we don't want it to stay that way. And so this is the other thing where I was thinking that maybe, um... <sighs> Ooh, excuse me, that maybe rotation would be useful. Like we could just have one, um... one ammonia precursor here, say, and grab the molecule by its center and spin it around. 
so that both ends end up touching the ammonia. Uh, but I'm not altogether so sure that that's really great. <laughs> right? Like, uh, it's kind of a lot of work to spin it around because you have to grab it by the exact center to make it end up like with the other end touching there. And we can easily do that once reaching from here. Um, but doing it again, like suppose that we have three like here, right? And at this stage, three says, okay, everyone, time to rotate and rotate again. Let's get a 180 flip, right? doesn't work. He's now pointing at a different thing. We would need like, well, actually, it's not so bad. Um, and you know what? While he's positioned there is kind of a great time to uh, peel the extra hydrogen off of this. If we have the ammonia factory down here. By the way, does this rotate rotate the whole board? It does, okay. So it's just a way of looking at the same layout differently, whereas this actually shifts things around, okay. Um, so what we could do here is have three remove this, uh, and then once one is kind of done with its stuff, right, we want it to be up here to continue the rotation. So if it goes left and then applies another right rotation, we got there, right? We stole this carbon's uh, hydrogen. Oh my God, I have to rotate it three times, huh? Yeah, I guess I'm used to thinking of squares where two like <laughs> meaningful turns is 180 degrees and that's great, but here two turns is only 120 degrees. Uh, I mean, I'm not altogether certain that this business of rotating to save one to save one uh, ammonia is all that great. But we're also saving like if we had ammonia on each end, we'd need emitters on both ends or actuators on both ends to do stuff to them. So putting extra rotators in the mix might be fine. At any rate, it's an interesting challenge, so I'll go ahead and do it, even though I don't know if it's really improving my performance statistics, right? Um, so the uh, we decided the ammonia producer is down here. And in fact, let's scooch everything up a bit so there's more room. Yeah, there's probably fine. Um, there's very little that really needs to happen here, right? Uh, We can just I was trying to find some solution that doesn't involve having to walk back and forth with this actuator. That that like just puts the ammonia here in place where we want it, right? Um, but there isn't really a good one that I can see. So We'll have the emitter start out like this. Um, is there a hotkey for precursors, by the way? It feels like there should be. What's space? Space is go. Not what I want at all. Tab? No, I already knew what that did. Uh, 
I can't find one. Um, anyway, give me some ammonia. So we put it here, right? And uh, we just need to remove one hydrogen from each of these, and that's pretty simple, right? Uh, five, just do this. Now they're all bonded properly. Uh, what happened? Oh, that's a new one. Yes, that's fine. That's what we want. Um, so at that stage, please remove this guy's... Or wait, when does that happen? Here? Yeah. And then scooch to the right again. Again, to remove. Ah, you shouldn't actually have to remove it because we're having it removed by three on the way, right? Yeah, this is going to arrive in 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 perfect shape. So all we need then is one is to have this emitter number two. Uh, after that rotation has all happened, apply one more, and then. Uh, just ship it, right? Incorrect output. Well, that's a bummer. Oh my god, the benzene is upside down. Is that what's happened? This this benzene here is out of order. Right? Because this is all correct. These are all fine. But by doing that rotation, I changed the clockwiseness of like where these bonds go. Instead of the double bond being uh, counterclockwise here, it's clockwise from here. And I complained about some of the earlier ones where I felt that, like, oh, you know, bending shouldn't really count uh, or, like, you know, whatever. I think this actually does represent a different molecular structure, just barely, in some way that I don't totally understand. Like, I don't know. Rotational symmetry makes sense to me. But I don't know if you can, like, mirror part of a molecule and have it still make sense and be the same molecule. So I think what I did here really is incorrect. And I should just have two different ammonia factories, which is like sort of fine. I mean, two and three, I had to add like, I had to do a lot of extra stuff to, to make this possible. So it really is not saving me much. Um, so let's have five do, uh, two do basically what, uh, wait a minute. On this one, though, the benzene is supposed to be the other way around. Isn't it? Oh, I see. So after... Oh, shit. Is there an undo? Yes, thank you, Zach. Uh, redo? There we go. So at this stage... The benzene that is backwards is the one on the northwest. But it's not backwards because I rotated it, right? It's sort of like backwards because it's supposed to be oriented differently than the other one. And I rotated them both an equal amount. This is very... Very strange. So, how, how much do I have to adjust things to make this line up properly? I think the answer is very little.
I think I can I can use my my single ammonia solution. All I have to do, I think, is take this benzene and rotate it a bit before all the work begins. And I have some spare time while we're setting up with the uh, sulfuric acid, right? So I have to like start it somewhere else and then rotate it into place. Which I think just looks like this. Oops, wrong button. This. It collided. Okay, so back it up a bit more and then push it into place as well, yeah? Uh, yeah, no one's operated on any of the carbons yet, so that's sort of fine. Ah! Uh, I was not ready for this to reappear. That's kind of a bummer. It's, it's about to get in the way. Having to put it so far away was a problem. Yeah, like there's nowhere I could put the benzene spawner where it would still overlap with one of these things, is there? What if like two's job at, at some stage were to take this new benzene and push it out of the way or rotate it out of the way a bit, right? Like, um, everything gets glued together and that's all like sort of fine. At this stage now, what if two rotates this out of the way? Is it still, I think it's still gonna be in the way, but not as much. Two was the one whose job was to rotate this thing, so that's kind of a problem, right? We can put another module down. I just pointed at my screen with my finger. Down here, if we move this ammonia spawner a bit, then we'll have a clear shot into the center for the last rotation. But um, is that rotation really going to be sufficient? Maybe, maybe we don't actually have to rotate it all the way. Since we're gonna have to add a new thing to make the rotation happen anyway, it's not all that great. So what if I, um, just take this new ammonia and push it up here to meet up with the benzene that's coming down. All right, take my last actuator starting this turn I push stuff with six I guess it's not yeah it's my last I think this gets us to the right place no I need you up here and pulling please never gonna get the hang of that apparently uh, this carbon is already too deficient yeah I don't want to bond with it on this side when I pull it up here right it'll it'll bond here wherever I want it to bond here even though 
again, I'm pretty sure that actually is equivalent, right? The carbon bonding to a nitrogen here is really no different than one bonding to a nitrogen here. Um, but, I mean, we can, we can solve this problem by, as we're pulling this ammonia up, we also pull the whole pending module left, right? So here, one starts starts pulling. Oh, that's two. Actually, we didn't even have to pull that far, because this will do, right? And then right as we're pulling it in, we also push with this. And then we can submit, right? All right, what's wrong with this? Don't tell me I got something else wrong. Show me what's wrong. All right, let's look at it from the perspective of this nitrogen. It bonds to a carbon, and then if it turns, well, it's clearly wrong. It should be able to turn right and get to, well, no, okay. Yeah, now, are they both backwards somehow? How did that happen? I thought the problem was that I was treating them. Hmm. Did I just rotate the wrong one? How did they both end up being backwards? Because I, I think that's the position, right? Um, if we view, actually, uh, we should be able to actually orient things so that what we see is, oh man, I have no idea what position this is now. Okay, yeah, see, now it's, now it's oriented like the same way as it is in the picture. Uh, this whole structure is correct. So we're viewing the molecule the, white, the, the right way around. And and this bond is wrong, right? Likewise up here, this bond is wrong. Before, only one of them was wrong. And then I flipped one, and now they're both wrong. So that tells me that I must have flipped the wrong one, although I don't totally understand how that happened. I guess I just viewed them both as needing to be different, but I didn't think about them as from the perspective of the kind of symmetry points of the molecule. So what am I supposed to do then? Like. Was this thing I did about rotating it into place even correct? Did it do something? That's an interesting question, actually. Let's go back to the original perspective we were using. And um, and try having two like not do this whole nonsense, right? Let's just put this right here to begin with and put two We'll, we'll move these down here so I remember what they were, but not, not have them do anything yet. Will we, at the end of this, find that one of the molecules is aligned correctly and the other is not? Because if so, then I know I just need to orient, to add some flips to orient the other one. Okay. Yes. This one down here 
is oriented correctly, and this one is still oriented wrong. So I think the problem was I looked at the molecule generated, but like didn't look at it look at it from a perspective that mirrored what I was actually doing on the board, and I decided it didn't matter which one I adjusted, but it does, and I adjusted the wrong one. This is kind of a bummer because adjusting this one is more difficult. It's next to the ammonia, um, right? I think so. Wait a minute. Am I the dumbest person on Earth? I could just put down rotated benzene modules, molecules, right? <sighs> yeah. I, I, when I first put them down, they kind of look circular, and so I didn't even imagine rotating them. But then I went to all this work of rotating them, when I could have just put them down and rotated the right way around to begin with, yeah? So... I think all I need to do is give me some more benzene but orient it like this <laughs> and put it there. Yeah, look at that, it's rotated, amazing. And I think we'll be okay now. Okay, cool. Uh, downside, I forgot to have four go back to his position when he's done. So let's do that now. And this like, this extra step here feels a little inelegant. Like I'm pulling this this way and nothing's happening here. If I could on this same turn, I think, that I'm pulling this up, Instead of pulling it up again and having one push the thing over, I should have two push the whole thing down to meet it here, right? I think that would be okay. So one, instead of doing this, have two push on the previous turn. And it's still correct and everything spawned into place exactly like we wanted, right? Nobody's misaligned or anything. Yeah, all of our moves are are accounted for. Yeah, it's kind of a cool little not exactly assembly line, but at least it's not doing anything obviously dumb, although this weird kind of shifting of this DAP zone in progress looks a little silly. Okay, so wait, so fewer modules than almost everyone used, but high on cycles and symbols. Well, that's what I was trying to optimize for, right? So I can live with that. And look at that, we've unlocked the uh, Hojik? Hodjik? I don't know. I should stop trying to pronounce these and sound like a, a dummy when, uh, when like I, I don't know how to pronounce something. Oh, everyone knows that. That's the cool drug everyone's taking, right? How, how, what do you mean you don't know how to pronounce Dapsony? <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.